Are you trying to land an entry level job in cybersecurity? Do you want to know what the top cybersecurity certifications are for entry level jobs in the year 2022? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about all the top entry level cybersecurity certifications that you should be pursuing for the year 2022. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. All right, let's get into the video. Before we jump into the list, I just want to point out that cybersecurity in itself is not an entry level area of technology jobs. We get a lot of people from IT or from developer backgrounds in these other areas. And the important thing about that is those other jobs really allow people to kind of develop their foundational knowledge of how networks and systems operate in the enterprise. If you're just coming straight into cybersecurity or you're trying to, it's a little bit more difficult because there is kind of this assumption or implication that you know that information and that you're not just starting from scratch. I really want to bring that up just because it does come up a lot from people trying to get into the field. And it's really important to have that foundational knowledge. Remember, this whole thing is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So you're constantly going to have to learn and get better and better every day. Now, I really want you to check out my free ebook on my getting started page on my website because I go a lot more in detail about kind of the roadmap and the things that you should be learning along the way and where you should know certain things as you progress in your career. Now that's out of the way, let's get into the list. All right, the number five security certification is gonna be the System Security Certified Practitioner or the SSCP from ISC Squared. Now ISC Squared also makes the CISSP or the CISP and that's kind of the gold standard when it comes to security certifications and something you should aim for later in your career. But that's an important distinction because you're going to learn a lot of the same stuff, but you're going to learn at more of kind of a high level. So that entry level position, and you're going to learn things all the way from security operations, all the way up to risk and risk management. And the exam itself, it's a multiple choice exam, which is okay for entry level exams, because frankly, you're going to be expected to know terms and kind of at a high level and a theory level, instead of actually knowing that deep down technical knowledge that you're going to be expected to know as you get more senior. Now, one thing with the SSCP that I want you to keep in mind is it's not going to show up as much as some of these other security certifications. But the key thing is there are large organizations like the Department of Defense in the United States that would like to have this security certification and it does qualify you for similar level jobs. So just keep that in mind as we look through this. Let's go ahead and pull up the website. Okay, this is the website for the SSCP, or again, the System Security Certified Professional by ISC Squared. So if we go ahead and scroll down here, we can start looking and seeing what this actually covers. So we can see some of the different roles that are gonna have this. Again, this is an entry-level security certification. So you're gonna have a lot of different people that can qualify for this and that will pursue it. But network security engineer, systems administrator, security analyst, and again, you know, these are kind of broad, different job titles that people have. So you register and prepare for the exam. You can see the different domains. So again, security operations, access controls, risk, incident response, cryptography, network and communication security, system and application security. Again, these are core foundational topics for security that you're going to have to know. If we go ahead and go to the Get Certified page here, you can see something important here that is not consistent with other security certifications. So with ISC squared, almost all of their security certifications require experience and require to get endorsed. So this one requires one year of experience. Keep that in mind as you're going through if you decide to go for this security certification. And then if we scroll down here, you can see here that there is an annual requirement. A lot of these security certifications have that ongoing requirement. So you have to go to additional classes or look at webinars and do all these kinds of things to maintain your status. I went ahead and pulled up Indeed, which in the United States, that's one of the major job searching websites that we use, just so you can see how many jobs list this. So there is over 4,000 jobs that want the SSCP or list it as an acceptable certification to get for those jobs. And you can just scroll down here and see the different kinds of jobs that are in here. Again, this is going to be an entry level security certification. So there's going to be a lot of different jobs that are going to accept this. And it's going to be a lot of Department of Defense kind of jobs like contractors and things like that. But we can just see the different kinds of jobs in here. So system administrator, 
and SharePoint Administrator. So you're seeing other IT jobs, not just security jobs. And if you're not familiar with the DOD 8570 or 8140 or any of those kind of requirements, basically it's a roadmap or a chart that shows which certifications apply to which level of jobs. So as you increase in responsibility, they expect higher level certifications. But I'm bringing this up because of the SSCP. You can see that that does fall into here on this chart. So it can be very useful in that kind of environment. The number four security certification is gonna be the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester. Now eLearn Security is a relatively new certification body when you compare it to other things like ISC Squared or CompTIA, but they've actually been gaining a lot of traction over the years. Now one of the things with eLearn Security is they really focus on practical exams. And that means you have to go do tasks and then either answer information or write a report and specifically with EJPT, what they'll have you do is they'll have you do tasks and they'll ask you multiple choice questions. So you're still having to do the stuff. But for employers, this is really nice because it does show that you actually know what you're doing in relation to that certification. So keep that in mind. It does look good to have a practical certification. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is in cybersecurity, penetration testing jobs are a very small amount of jobs that exist in cybersecurity. The certification is geared towards penetration testing and the information is really good to know, but I just want you to keep that in mind. Just because you get the certification doesn't mean you're gonna get a pen testing job. But again, it's good information and sometimes these practical exams are more fun and they can be more enjoyable to further your studies than just focusing on a pure theory or conceptual kind of certification. All right, let's go ahead and check out the website for the EJPT. All right, this is the EJPT website. And again, it's the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester Certification. And if we scroll down here, you can see a lot of the different stuff that's gonna be covered. But basically the idea is you're gonna learn a lot of the basics of pen testing. So that's gonna be things like Metasploit and web exploitation and things like that. So you're gonna get actually familiar with these kind of attacks that people are using. And if we keep scrolling down here, we can see a little bit more about it. And again, this certifies that the candidate has all the prerequisites needed to enroll in the INE penetration testing professional path, which again, that's the certification above this. So it's kind of preparing you for that next level. And if we scroll down here, you can see a little bit more. Now with eLearn Security, something that's interesting is they have combined with INE. And so the INE platform is actually where you're gonna get the training from. So it's just kind of an interesting change that's happened over the last year or so. If we bring up Indeed again, we search for EJPT, you can see one of 15 jobs. So again, penetration testing jobs, there's not a lot out there. It's a very small subset of the actual cybersecurity jobs, but other jobs do leverage this information to actually protect their networks and identify where there's security issues. But again, very few jobs are gonna ask for any kind of penetration testing certification, not just the EJPT. All right, number three is the GIAC Security Essentials or the GSEC. Now, GIAC certifications are some of the most well-respected in our industry, and they have certifications covering just about everything. So pen testing, they have reverse engineering, they have Python, they have security operations, cloud security, everything that you can imagine related to cybersecurity. Now, with regards to GIAC certifications, one of the downsides is that they're very expensive. We're talking over $7,000 just for the course. So a lot of people aren't gonna be able to just fund that on their own, and they'll have to actually get an employer to do it, but they are very valuable. And then on the flip side, with the GSEC specifically, in my opinion, that's the most well-rounded security certification, especially when it comes to entry-level people, because you're gonna learn about Windows, you're gonna learn about Linux, you're gonna learn about web, you're gonna learn about cryptography, all this stuff, and it does have hands-on labs that you can practice this stuff in. So it is just very well-rounded. Now on GIAC certification specifically, one of the things that's interesting too is that it's open book. So on every certification course that is done by SANS, because that's who offers the official training, you'll get somewhere between you know, three and six books on a course. And what happens on the exam is you can take all those with you and typically people will make an index so they can refer back to specific pages or specific information. So it's kind of different, but it does actually mimic the real world because we're not gonna be expected to know everything. We're gonna be able to look up things on Google or you know on the internet 
So just keep that in mind. It's kind of a different mindset when it goes into the exam. And then just one more point about the training. With SANS, they do have on-demand online training that you can do, but you can also actually go to these conferences that they host and you can network with people. So you can meet a lot of different professionals that are in other courses that go to these conferences and you can really build up your network and your sphere of kind of experience and influence that you have within the industry. So it's super valuable to go to these things. All right, so this is the website for the GSEC, again by GIAC, that's GIAC Security Essentials. If we scroll down here, we can see who it's meant for. So kind of everybody, right? So auditors, pen testers, operations personnel, security managers. Again, this is kind of a well-rounded, high-level security certification that covers a whole bunch of different stuff. And if we scroll down here, we look at the exam, 106 to 180 questions. Remember, it's open book, so you get to take your books with you. Minimum score of 73% to pass, and you get four to five hours in order to pass. So really cool certification to get and very useful, but again, it's pretty expensive. Scroll down here, we see a little bit more of the stuff that is in the exam. So a whole bunch of different stuff to get you ready for the security certification. If you're interested in the official training, this is the official training. So SEC 401, Security Essentials Network Endpoint and Cloud. And you can just go on here and you can actually sign up for it. But they'll tell you what you get and kind of what you go through. And I personally have been through this course and it was a lot of fun. It was very interesting, gave you a lot of good information. And you can see it's a pretty extensive, pretty long course, six days long. All right, if we bring over Indeed, we have search for GSEC and we can see that there's 3,600 jobs that list it. Now, this also falls into the DOD 8140 or 8570, like we pulled up earlier. And you can see the different kind of jobs. And this is a well-rounded security certification, so it's gonna be a lot of different jobs, but IT security and compliance manager, then we have operations analyst, security risk analyst. So there's a whole bunch of different jobs that can have the security certification. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. If you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that all my training is available on my website without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. The next security certification that I want you to get is the Amazon Web Services Certified Cloud Practitioner or the AWS CCP. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, then you know I talk about cloud a lot. And that's because companies are continuing to adopt cloud. They're continuing to put databases and servers and all kinds of things up into the cloud. So especially if you're just getting into this field and you're entry level and you wanna rank up really quickly, I would go for cloud. That's gonna be a really quick path to the top. Now, one question that you might be asking yourself is why get certified in AWS? Well, when people ask me for a recommendation, I typically ask them to consider a few different things. So first of all, if you're working right now, which cloud provider is your company using? Are they using Microsoft? Are they using Google? If they are, then you might wanna get certified in that because you'll be able to rank up really quickly. If you're gonna leave that company or you're not working at all, then AWS has the largest market share. So why wouldn't you go for them? If you were looking at certifications for networking, would you go for Cisco or would you go for Juniper? It's the same kind of idea. Most people would go for Cisco over Juniper. And it's the same with cloud. Most people are gonna go with AWS over the other ones. So just keep that in mind. Now with cloud, cloud's a little bit different than some of the other areas because with cloud, you don't really need that traditional background as far as some of the other information. And it makes it a little bit more specific to knowing how AWS or some of these cloud environments work because you're really gonna be specialized in that area. For example, with firewalls or with routing, you're not gonna have to know how to configure a Cisco router. It's just probably not gonna be in that job description. Now, I have also made a video on how to actually build up a home lab and it's on my YouTube channel. So I highly recommend that you check that out because that's gonna cover some of the things that you'll learn in going for this certification. The big thing too with cloud is that it is very much software based. So again, it's not a lot of that hardware. It's not taking 50 Cisco routers and putting them in a room or putting them in a rack. It's a lot of software based and GUI based kind of stuff that you can also script out too. All right, let's look at the website for the AWS CCP. All right, this is the website for the AWS CCP. Again, that's a certified cloud practitioner. That is the entry level certification for AWS. 
So if we scroll down here, we can see some different stuff about it. So they recommend that you have six months exposure in AWS Cloud. Again, that's a recommendation. That's not a requirement. You can get this certification without having six months of experience, but it's a recommendation. Thank you for what it is. And it's a foundational exam, 90 minutes to complete it, 100 bucks to take it. It's a virtual exam, so it's proctored, and it's a pretty, pretty clean process. I've gone through it. I have this certification, so it's not bad. Uh, 65 multiple choice questions or multiple response questions. And then, yeah, again, Pearson View or PSI are going to actually proctor the exam. And so I'm not going to take too much away from this page, but definitely check it out if you're interested in cloud. Again, AWS is the one, is the path that I recommend to a lot of people. So consider it. If we pull up Indeed and we look at the jobs, I search for AWS, 139,000 postings mention AWS. That is insane. That is by far and away way more than even like the CISSP is going to have. So if we do AWS and then security, because this is a cybersecurity channel, we see 66,000 job postings for AWS security. That's crazy. So I want you to take that in and kind of process that. That is a lot of job opportunity. Like I said, you can climb very fast if this is the area that you want to focus in. All right, are we ready for the number one security certification? I know you've been waiting for it. This may or may not be a surprise to you at what the top entry level cybersecurity certification is, but it's going to be the Security Plus from CompTIA. Now, high level, the Security Plus is very similar to the SSCP. It covers a lot of the entry level information at a very high level, so a conceptual level. It's vendor neutral. It's not going to focus on specific technologies. And I'm going to be honest, one of the biggest reasons why this security certification keeps ending up at the top of these lists is because of employer awareness and how many job postings it shows up in. For security certifications, it shows up in so many job postings. When you're looking for your first cybersecurity job, it's not rocket science to look at job postings and try to appeal for what employers are asking for. I'm telling you, in the industry, the Security Plus is the accepted baseline security certification for entry-level people. So if nothing else, why not play the game and just get what they want? I'm not saying all this because Security Plus won't give you good knowledge. It absolutely is going to give you good knowledge. But there's people all the time that are entry level that are just trying to fight the system or they're trying to change the way that people think like employers. I'm telling you, as an entry level employee, you're just not going to do it. I'm trying to help you and give you the most opportunities, the most job possibilities that you can get. So sometimes you have to play the game even if you don't want to. All right, let's take a look at the website for the Security Plus. All right, this is the website for the Security Plus. Again, it's from CompTIA. If we go ahead and we scroll down here, we can see a little bit more about it. So you're gonna learn about assessing security posture, monitoring and securing hybrid environments, operating within laws, and identifying, analyzing, and responding to security events and incidents. So again, this is a widely accepted security certification. This shows up in the DOD 8140 and 8570. So a lot of employers are looking for this security certification. You're also going to learn about attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, architecture and design, implementation, operation, incident response, governance, risk, and compliance. So again, broad level, high level kind of stuff, just like the SSCP, but is way more widely adopted. Scroll down here, we look at the different kind of job postings. So security administrator, help desk manager, network cloud engineer, a whole bunch of different jobs that want the security certification. It's going to give you enough information to kind of have that vocabulary and know what you're doing, but it's not going to make you a cybersecurity expert. Again, it's an entry-level cybersecurity certification. If we scroll down here, so the current exam is this SY0601. This one is the old one, the 501. So they haven't removed it from their website yet, but the launch date of this was about a year ago from the recording of this video. So November, 2020. The exam, 90 questions you're gonna get, 90 minutes to take it. You need 750 to pass as far as the score. There's no hard and fast requirement to take the exam for experience, but just keep that in mind. They do recommend the Network Plus and two years of experience. So take it for what it is. I know people that pass without any experience, so it is possible. And then the cost, 370 bucks. 
they usually retire the certification exam after about three years. So again, this one came out in 2020. So we're looking at about 2023. So you're good on this level. And the nice thing about now compared to when it first came out is there's a lot of study materials that are out there. So definitely look at this one. If we pull over Indeed, we can look at the job postings. So 54,000 jobs when I search for Security Plus and Cyber. I search for just Security Plus and there's a lot of other jobs that came up. So I don't know why it doesn't really work. It's probably something to do with the plus here. But keep that in mind, there's a whole bunch of different jobs that want this security certification. Remember, like I said, this is accepted as the industry standard or the baseline for entry-level cybersecurity jobs. Question of the day, which of these cybersecurity certifications that I listed are you gonna pursue? Do you think I missed one and there's a better one out there? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked all about the top entry-level cybersecurity certifications that you should be pursuing in the year 2022. Remember that with these security certifications, you don't have to just get one. You can get multiple. You can get one of these and combine them with others. The big idea is that you have to keep learning and progressing your knowledge. Also make sure to check out the video description where I've listed resources for each security certification. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements. And I'll see you next time.